a new habitat for polar bears at St. Paul's Como Zoo, an expansion of St. Cloud's Convention Center, local road and bridge improvements. You may not know it by looking at these projects, but they all benefited from the state sale of bonds. Often the state sells bonds to investors as a way to raise money to cover construction costs of capital improvement projects. We get a chunk of money up front that we borrow from the people that buy the bonds and then we pay them back with interest over time. Chair of the House Capital Investment Committee, Paul Torkelson, says the state's bond sale is done for similar reasons as a family taking out a loan. Issuing bonds gives us more leverage to get more money up front to get these projects moving forward so that, for instance, if it's a bridge, uh, we can build a bridge today and pay for it over time, similar to your house. Most people can't afford to buy the whole house with one big check, uh, so they borrow from a bank. Uh, and to, so they can have the house today and raise their family and then pay for it over time. And that's basically how bonds work for the state of Minnesota. In order to receive money from the sale of bonds, projects have to meet certain requirements. For example, they must fulfill a public purpose. We're looking for a statewide significance. We're looking for projects that uh, actually move the economy of Minnesota forward. Bonding money may help fund streets, bridges, sewers, waste management buildings, and other public buildings. It could also fund improvements to transit systems, public colleges, and universities. Every state agency owns buildings uh, all around the state and here in St. Paul. And those buildings need to be cared for. You know, taking care of what we have uh, when it comes to a major renovation is part of the bonding process. Hi, I'm Sarah Allen outside the Minnesota State Capitol. The Capitol's restoration project is a great example of a capital investment project that has benefited from bond proceeds. However, as we'll explain, not all construction projects that could fulfill a public purpose receive bond assistance. The second year of the legislative biennium is typically when the legislature works to pass a large bonding bill. We have a little more uh, leeway and time available to properly vet bonding projects. In past years, the bill has totaled close to a billion dollars, making it a great opportunity for local units of government and state agencies to request assistance to pay for capital improvement projects. However, many of these requests are turned down. We're saying no more often than we're saying yes. Even if a request makes the cuts and into the so-called bonding bill, it still takes a larger number of legislators to vote favorably for the bill than other legislation before it can reach the governor's desk for his action. In the next few minutes, we'll take you through this highly competitive process a project must travel through to be included in a bonding bill. State Budget Director Margaret Kelly says one of the first steps is for local units of government and state agencies to submit their request to Minnesota Management and Budget. The agency then compiles the submissions for consideration by the legislature and governor. October 16, 2015 was the last date for both local governments and state agencies to submit their final requests for the 2016 bonding bill. We publish a document, it's uh, two thick volumes. The governor and legislature received 283 project requests, totaling $3.7 billion for their consideration for the 2016 bonding bill. In recent years, bonding requests have also totaled more than $3 billion. Members of the Capital Investment Committee and staff from the governor's office tour project sites and meet with local citizens and officials 
in hopes of prioritizing which projects are in the best interest of Minnesota. We get a chance to relate to the community members, get an idea of how they really feel about these projects. Uh, we're also looking for local support, both in the form of financial support, that uh, whatever, if it's a local government project, that the local government is putting some money into the project, and also that the community uh, behind, the community surrounding the project is in full support of the project moving forward. After the tours, the governor and the House and Senate each decide which projects they would like to see funded. These recommendations come forward in bill form and are bound together during session as a comprehensive capital investment bill. We write our own, um, but obviously it's very important to us what the governor uh, is proposing because he ultimately has to sign it. By law, the bonding bill has to be approved by at least a three-fifths vote of each body of the legislature before arriving on the governor's desk. The bonding bill is a harder bill to pass than any other because it requires a supermajority. So by its nature, it is a much more bipartisan process. You have to work together. That's why Representative Hausman says it's important that the bill be attractive to all members whether Republican or DFL, urban or rural. When we write the bill, it should be immediately clear, yes, the bill is fair to all regions of the state. I mean, that would be one measure. But then the other is an individual member looks at it and says, is it fair to my district? <laughs> the House bonding bill may also include other proposals heard during session that weren't in the Minnesota Management and Budget Report or seen on a tour. I would say we're always open to, uh, to changes uh, right up until the end. Torkelson says the total amount of money allocated to projects in a bonding bill is worked out in negotiations. Well, that's really a, a determined by negotiations between the three big players, the governor's office, the majority caucus in the House and the majority caucus in the Senate, with input from the minority caucuses also. Um, but that's kind of, you know, I, I kind of wait for, uh, for that process to happen before we can uh, final assemble, uh, assemble that final bill because it's, uh, it's really pretty high level discussion to determine the size of the bill. It's always what a lot of people focus on is the size of the bill. I really choose to focus on what's in the bill. If a bonding bill is passed by the legislature and signed into law by the governor, Minnesota Management and Budget sells bonds to fund the approved projects. We look at the timeline of the projects and understand what the cash flow needs are, and we sell bonds as the dollars are needed. The primary type of bonds sold to cover capital improvement projects is known as a general obligation bond. Because general obligation bonds are backed by the full faith, credit, and taxing powers of the state, Minnesota's good credit rating make it an attractive buy for investors. They are backed by tax dollars and so they're less risky. As a final step in the process, Minnesota management and budgets will make sure units of government and state agencies use the bond money how the law dictates. Whether it's money for new museum space or to improve local roads, the process to secure bond money is a highly competitive one.